Well, it is that time of week, time for another OTR Essential Q&A video. Remember, go buy the shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees and subscribe to the channel, damn it. Hashtag subscribe or die is still alive in 2018. Don't you forget it. But anyways, let's get ready for the Q&A. And if you want to ask questions on a future Q&A video for if no other reason than to be able to mark out as I mention your name on video, then what you do each week on Twitter, first you have to follow OTR Central on Twitter, sounds easy enough, and then when I ask you for your questions, you tweet them to me, and some of the best ones will make the Q&A videos. Now, I have to say this week, the questions were very interesting, in the sense of we've got a WWE pay-per-view coming up on Sunday in Elimination Chamber, and I don't think a single question that I got actually pertained to that show. That was something that really leapt out at me. It just really, really grabbed my attention. Not a single question about the actual pay-per-view coming up on Sunday. And usually, even when there's not much interest in a pay-per-view, even when there's not much interest in a show, if I do a Q&A really close to a big WWE show, there will at least be one or a couple of questions that tie in, and this time there is nothing. That doesn't tell you about the state of Raw, the state of WWE, the state of this road to WrestleMania. Then I don't know what the hell does. Well, let's get started. Michael Corbin asks, since WWE's UK division doesn't exist... <laughs> pretty much doesn't. Should that belt be a mid-card title on NXT? <laughs> Fuck whatever. I don't care. I don't watch NXT. So they want to do that. That's fine. That whole UK championship is so stupid. That UK championship tournament that they did was stupid. It's just dumb, dumb, stupid, dumb. I'm sorry. It was dumb, dumb, stupid, dumb. Because what did they even really get out of that in terms of talent? What type of impact did they get out of that? To me, absolutely nothing. What, so that way your UK champion can go wrestle with that belt on a couple of indies here and there? Who gives a crap? So yeah, it freaking might as well be. Honestly, I thought it was, but that's because I don't watch NXT, so I don't care. Mounty's Corner. Even though he's a decent dude and you should subscribe to him, this question sucks. Does it bother you Randy Orton will be a Hall of Famer? <sighs> why, do we, why do we have to ask about Randy Orton? Why do we need to know about Randy Orton? Why do you like Randy Orton so much? Like, le legitimate question. Like, why do you like Randy Orton so much? At least I will say for Mounty's Corner, he's consistent. Even if he doesn't want to always acknowledge this in public people, I promise you. How can you be a Randy Orton fan, but then shit on Roman Reigns? What's so fundamentally different? A thank you. While you might talk about Finney the Twink Mountie and others that you like, the truth is you deep down have a raging ring boner for Roman Reigns. Does it bother me that Randy Orton's going to be in the Hall of Fame? From like a personal and fan standpoint, yes, because I've always thought he was boring as bricks. I can't stand him. I think he's been a overforced, overpounded, overrated to hell wrestler, and he's a piece of crap as a person. That said, at least from a resume standpoint, he would actually belong in there. So that I could deal with. And hopefully by the time we got to the point that Randy Orton's going into the WWE Hall of Fame, I will have either A, found another wrestling company that I could watch, so that way I don't have to watch WWE anymore, or B, I don't, and I'm just not watching wrestling anymore, period, and I couldn't give a crap less. Let's hope one of those two is true, and I'm sure a lot of you are clapping about that right now. I'm just saying. A wrestling ramble. Do you believe that Benoit and Owen Hart will never be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, I think Chris Benoit, Steve, answers itself. Owen Hart? I will still hold out hope that someday he will, 
And look, I get why Martha's pissed. I get why Martha's angry. I get where Martha has this grudge against WWE and Vince. But ultimately, Owen signed off on doing that stuff. It has been almost 20 damn years. There are millions of people around the world that loved Owen Hart. And you shelter his kids, you shelter that part of the family away from that. They have a right to know all about their dad. And the fact that he was a star in WWF during his life is a big part of who he was. It was not the entirety, the totality of what in who he was, but it was a major significant part. And ultimately, my thought would be, while I have not experienced myself, so it is hard to judge from the outside looking in, there is also a point in time we have all experienced loss of friends, family, loved ones at some point in time. You, you can't take it with you to the grave, nor should you take it with you to the grave. Is one thing... If you're talking about your son or your daughter, you don't ever want to bury your kids, but it's your spouse and I get it, but God damn it, woman, it has been almost 20 fucking years now. Seriously, get over it. Get over it. I mean, really, all this bitching and fighting the WWE is never going to ever bring him back. This is one of these examples of a vindictive bitch. Understandably vindictive, yes. But a vindictive bitch that's presenting, preventing herself and everybody else involved from getting some of the healing that we probably do need. And she most certainly does. So I hold out hope someday that Owen does get in. Because if anything else, maybe the kids will overrule her. Let's pray. Dexter C73. Uh, will the success of Black Panther cause WWE to reconsider its use of black men? No. No. <laughs> Hell no. Mm -mm. No. Hell oh, no. No, 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 no. No. Let me answer that one more time. No. Disco Stern, can anybody top the founder, the Memphis mid-card piece of crap, in the most undeserving Hall of Fame category? No, never, not even Dino Bravo. Especially if Dino Bravo showed up for his speech. Oh wait, he can't. Why? Because he's dead. I bet he's got a hell of a deal on, me, on some cigarettes for you from beyond the grave. Javier R. Tarbo. It's been a while since I've heard from you, Artabro. Have you seen the Suspect Sissies video celebrating the Memphis Midcard Piece of Crap's Hall of Fame induction? Well, I guess when you're getting paid a million and a half dollars a year to suck, you will do dumb, geeky crap like that. However, ironically enough, they compare to each other in a lot of ways. They really do if you think about it. Both irrelevant, and I can't stand either one of them. So it's not surprising. It just speaks to, it's probably not even act. Like these guys are legitimately excited that the fucking founder is going into the Hall of Fame. Oh, Lord. Andrew Harrington. Who should win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? The simple answer to me is Goldberg. He's the headliner of the Hall of Fame class. You've got the stuff going on with the Andre the Giant documentary, so you want to make that battle royal perhaps feel like a big big deal. And in the real truth of the matter is, for the most part, that Andre the Giant Memorial battle royal doesn't mean shit anyway, so what the hell difference does it make? I mean, really, truly, what the hell difference does it make? Just like Goldberg winning, give us some of us older fans something to get excited about. Horror Movie Review 73. What year did WWE really start going downhill? Um, I think throughout the top 2000s, it started slowly going downhill, but very slowly. Like, you know, on a steady, very, very gradual decline. But still had f plenty enough um, to be able to say, I'm still okay with watching this product. Uh, to me, it was 2010. With the disappointment and the flop that the Nexus ultimately ended up being. Um, and 
the focus on Linda McMahon's Senate campaign, I felt like that was the year that shit really started to get into the crapper and it never recovered. To me, it's 2010. Mid Carter J, better duo, the Young Bucks or the Super Mario Brothers? Let me emphasize this again. The Young Bucks are to be known as the Bucks of Suck. Why? Because they absolutely fucking suck. You are asking me to compare Nick and Matt to fucking Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi are true international icons. The Bucks of Suck are hardcore fans, giddy jerk-off guy. It's the frickin' Mario and Luigi. It's the Super Mario Brothers and not even close. And don't at me with your bullshit either, people. Jackhammer5399. Last main roster pay-per-view you can remember genuinely enjoying. Um, oh damn. Oh damn. Oh, damn. We'll go with Survivor Series 2017 because of the epicness of God and all his glory in that main event. Because that just overshadows everything else. Because that's the only thing that matters because it involved God. So that is ultimately all that matters. Which is why if he's going to be in a tag match with his wife taking on Ronda Rousey and maybe somebody like The Rock, that match needs to main event WrestleMania because it just feels right. Matt Meffe, thoughts on the Louisiana Athletic Commission banning blood and pile drivers? I'm so glad somebody asked me this question because I hadn't talked about this in a video. Uh, they realize this is fake, right? They realize that wrestling is not real, right? This feels like some crap from the 60s and 70s still manifesting itself in 2018. Maybe somebody should have let them in on it. Maybe, I, I don't fucking know. I, I guess I get the banning blood part, but come on, man. Really? But the pile drivers thing? Especially if a certain someone's working a match at Mania, we better see a fucking pile driver. Dare them to find you. Dare them to find you. So stupid. Um, the Ryan Steele asks, in a long kind of diatribe talking about Triple H and John Cena and fans over the years talking about who they've really buried, he called out a couple of examples, I believe, with Triple H. But he said, aside from Bray Wyatt, who has John Cena truly buried? Really? Really? Alex Riley, beyond question, Wade Bear it most undoubtedly in a laundry list of others that I don't have the time to name here. But I've at least given you two to start it off. You've got the internet. You go look it up and come back and see if you still feel all right asking that question. I hope you were being a smart ass. I can't imagine you were being legitimate. Really? <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that one. Nick Tennyson. Besides Roman, who does Vince see as a big star on the current roster? I think he looks at AJ Styles as a certain type of reliable hand that guarantees a certain level of business. Uh, I think he looks at Braun Strowman as a future star. I think he feels safe with Seth Rollins, again, as a certain level of star. Maybe not a big star, but a star. Um, I honestly don't know who else at this point. I don't know who else. I, obviously, I mean, he looks at Brock Lesnar and thinks he's a big star. He still looks at John Cena and thinks he's a big star. He looks at Randy Orton and sees that he's a big star. So those, And he's going to look at Ronda Rousey and think she's going to be a massive star. So to answer your question, it's probably those people that I just named for the most part. Nick, Midnight New Mosaic. Thoughts on the racist chants at Kari Sane at NXT? Yeah, what were they chanting at her? Freaking crap about Pearl Harbor and massage parlors and stuff, really? 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 Wow. I, I saw something about it at first. People were tweeting about it. I didn't really know what they were talking about. Then when I saw it, I was like, oh, God. I'm not surprised. We're talking about wrestling. Yes, you've seen more liberals and more SJWs creep into professional wrestling, which brings its own laundry list of issues and whining, pissing and moaning and snowflaking. Um, but you still have plenty of conservative and right-wing snowflakes 
uh, that watch professional wrestling and and frankly it doesn't matter either way you get some of these stupid neckbeard fucking hardcore geeks that sit there and go to these damn shows I'm surprised this shit doesn't happen more often the real truth is I'm surprised this shit doesn't happen a lot more often just saying Charles McCain does Roman Reigns get too much hate from fans sometimes <sighs> Yes and no. It's the Cena 2.0 factor. And as more time goes along, it's more and more viable and legitimate as a complaint or a criticism or a concern. That said, and if we're really breaking it down and we're really being real here, if it was Daniel Bryan getting everything that Roman Reigns gets, these same people wouldn't say shit about it. They'd be like, well, you have to keep your star at the star level. You can't just keep knocking him down. He shouldn't have to job to anybody because he's Daniel Bryan. He's the best motherfucker wrestler in the world. He's the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. And he wants him. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, who else do you really have that you sit there and say that if you put them in Roman's spot, they would do so much more significantly better that they should be in that spot. And it's ridiculous that Roman is. I mean, you'd maybe say Braun? Maybe? But who else? And if you say Finn Balor, please see yourself off of this video. I mean... Ugh, it just speaks to how crappy the star power is on today's roster. Oh, my God. Sometimes he does get too much hate, but fuck him because he thinks that company doesn't discriminate specifically against minorities, which we all know is crap. Hell, they discriminate against plenty of white wrestlers, too, for God's sakes. So fuck Roman. Lysander closes us off, mercifully, by asking, why do you say WWE's never had a black world champion when The Rock was a multi-time WWF slash E champion. Because for the umpteenth dozen damn time, if The Rock only acknowledges his black side when he comes time for another Fast and Furious movie or another movie with Kevin Hart to come out, and the WWE spent two decades doing everything they could to only casually reference the soul man Rocky Johnson to mention his Samoan heritage and emphasize his Samoan aspects. It's not hard to understand. For fuck's sake, The Rock got Samoan tribal tattoos. He associates with his mother's lineage, as a lot of sons do. They associate with their mother's side, their mother's family heritage, lineage, what, whatever. If he thinks he's fucking Samoan, like if you ask The Rock what he is, he will tell you he's fucking Samoan. So it doesn't count. If the WWE never truly counted it, other than when it was convenient for them, if The Rock never counts it unless it's convenient for him, then why the fuck would we classify him as black? That is stupid. The reason I say they never had one is because they never fucking have. The Rock was Samoan, not black. I don't give a shit what anybody wants to say. You ask him, he'll tell you he's Samoan. That ends the fucking discussion. Unless, again, there's a Fast and Furious movie or a Kev movie with Kevin Hart coming out. Then he will remember that his dad was black. But other than that, not so much. Anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Um... I'll check back with you on the flip side after Elimination Chamber. We'll see how that crap show's going to go. Again, not a single question about that show tells me all I need to know about Sunday night, that's for sure. But this is the Schleid Daddy here on OTR Essential. And continue to remember, people, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.